want you to do it, nigga. Ain't self defense, nigga. Nigga, whole ass nigga. First off, I want to say yes, that is me in that video. Yes, that is at my house in my living room. Having my pajamas. Technically speaking, my wife beauty in my underwear. Yes. But the true tragedy of that video, the true tragic part, the sad part about that video is right before it cut off, right before it cut off. I had just spilt my motherfucking drink. Man, straight up, I had the shot glass filled up right for my next shot. And boom, man, we over that bullshit and spilt my drink, man. And if you're a drinker, you know. You niggas spill your drink, your whole fucking day is just, it, it just pissed me off, man. But anyway, the player was good enough to go to the store, buy me a fresh bottle. We had drinks. He spent the night. I had to tuck him in my bed because, you know, he couldn't keep up with me, man, because I'm a drink champ way before Nori. I take that back. Nori is a drink. He, 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 been, he been drinking a little bit stronger than me, longer than me. But I had to stop drinking. But in all seriousness, now I'm sorry, man, if I can't take everything serious. But in all seriousness, that video was shot about four years ago. And um, the person in the video with me that's doing all the screaming and hollering is a beloved friend of mine, so a loved one. You know what I mean? It's not somebody, a, a so-called wannabe internet bully, put it on the internet trying to make me feel like, uh, somebody ran up in my house and killed me and beat me up and extorted me or or or, or beat me up for this or whatever. No, it's not, that's not what happened. Anybody that's been to my home have all been loved ones. I don't just let strangers in my house. That man was in my house because I invited him in my house. That little chest bumping match was something. You know how you get into an argument or a fight with your little brother or your cousin? And you know he ain't going to do nothing, but you hear him talking and screaming loud. It's like, whatever. That's exactly what that is. Not to say that he a sucker or a chump. Just to say I know he wasn't going to harm me. Not to say he's not going to harm nobody, but I know he's not going to harm me. So, to the guy that posted it, hey, man, I'm not a seven-year-old. This is not kindergarten. You can't bully me around. You think I'm scared? Man, dude, listen. I'm from Chicago, man. With a mouth like this and a face like this, I've been getting my ass whooped way before World Star. Man, I ain't never ran from a fight, man. Please ask about me in Chicago, man. I jumped off the porch early and was staying out way after the street lights came on. So, man, you can't, you can, dude, you cannot spook me, shake me up, besmirch my reputation or nothing over some silly shit like that of me getting drunk. And that was how. So anyway, back to the bully. Ooh, I'll put the little stuff up on it. Not even a bully. I can't even call you a bully. Giving you a, calling you a bully is a, really a, a compliment. You're more of a pest. You're something that nobody wants to be bothered with. And that's what hurts your feelings, man. Flee alone. Nobody wants to be bothered with you, dude. You're not welcome. Anyway. But yeah, that's the video, man. So for everybody that's been texting me, calling me, or inboxing me, you know, yeah, that video is four years old. That was with a loved one of mine. The guy in the video um, went and bought a bottle. We drank some more. I was already drunk. I was laid on the floor with it, my assistant. Uh, <laughs> uh, we drank some more. He spent the night. We cool. It's all good. It's all love. All love. So everybody that had any concerns about it, my well-being, I'm okay. All the comments of y'all cracking jokes laughing. I see you, player. I see you. Talking about I'm sick. I'm not. I wasn't sick. I was perfectly fine. I was just drunk. I don't drink no more because I'm a type 2 diabetic. And I found out that when you drink, the liquor turns into sugar. So that's like me just taking a whole bunch of sugar and the shit could kill me. So honestly, man, to all my drinkers out there, I would love to have a drink with you, man. I would. But I just can't do it because I don't know how to drink. I have one drink too many. Yeah. I, I just don't know how to drink. I overdo it every time. Last time I got drunk was December 5th, 2015. That was a Bishop Don Juan party in California. I got blasted. But, like I say, it was club drunk, not house drunk. That was house drunk. But anyway, to everybody that was wondering how I was doing and how I was feeling, hey, man, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. But I am A-OK. -okay. Out Gamer, shouts out. Big K-Red, appreciate you. All y'all, be cool.
Now, at this point, I need everybody to stop watching the video because I just want to take this time to address the young man, the pest that put the video up. I just want to tell him a couple of things and I want to tell him one on one. I don't want to call his phone because I know he records phone calls and try to change things up. So let me just talk to him for a second. So y'all be cool and careful. Log on to Two Real for TV. Subscribe to the channel. Peace out. Now, everybody, I need y'all to cut cut the um, stop the video. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the rest of it. That's it, man. We we done. I'm good, y'all. Thanks. Appreciate it. Peace out. Yeah, pivot, pivot. Put stop. Put the video down. Stop. Stop. Stop the video. Yeah. You too, little mama. All right. Everybody go. Okay. Listen, Junior. Listen, man. We're living with my parents. My brother even went berserk, and my brother is like a nerd, an internet dude that's like a hipster who hangs with, you know, one of those tight jeans. So my brother, who's so gentle and, you know, never heard a fly, nothing, had to jump up out of his sleep and go ham because all, he was like, oh, it's the fucking Maroi. That's all I'm hearing Junior talk about. It's like driving me insane. He's like, who is this They girl? call him, they call, you said, he, that's all he hear, who? Junior. That's what they call him, Junior? Junior, yeah, Junior. That's what we call him. Who the hell is Maroy? He's like, I'm so tired of hearing Maroy's name. Because Junior would sit on his laptop all night. I don't know who he was talking to or if he was talking to you. But Maroy, 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 Maroy. I'm talking about like a thousand times a day. Maroy. It was like an obsession. An obsession. So I started looking on Facebook and I'm like, oh, okay. Maroy was a film director. And, he's, and I'm like, okay, Maroy is in the life it looks like. Or, you know, I don't, I don't really know. But I'm like... Okay, Junior's jealous of him. Listen, man. I Listen, man. I want to tell you, man, sincerely, man. I see what you're trying to do. You know, I know you're trying to get your little wave going. And I know it's hard, man. The world is overcrowded. Everybody's doing something. So you got to figure out some type of niche for you. And I see what you've been through, man. I've, 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 I've watched you. You know, I remember you started off. You wanted to be a rapper. And then you failed at that, you know, because to be a rapper, you kind of got to be cool and you're really not cool. Even if you're going to be a nerd, you still got to be a cool nerd and you're not that, you know. So you failed as a rapper. Then I know you wanted to be a radio host, kind of like a shock jock. Of course, you you know, you, that didn't go your way either. You know what I mean? You was trying to do like a Charlemagne the God early, but, you know, the difference is he cites his sources. You make up shit. So your credibility is fucked up. Then, you know, you went and bought all this radio equipment with stolen credit cards. You caught a case. You went to jail for it. Actually, looking at your police record, you went to jail for just about every single crime you've ever done. Which means you failed as a criminal. And that's pretty sad, man. You fail it when you're bad at doing bad. You can't even do bad right. Then you tried to start a magazine. You claim you started a magazine and a little white lady took it from you. How does a big tough guy like you that's so smart and so gangster let a little white girl take your magazine and do great things, phenomenal things with it? And then you get locked up and she sends you a letter in jail telling you how much of an idiot you are. Hey, man, I feel for you. I understand your anger. Then you get convicted and go to prison for rape. A rape. I mean, when you was doing the credit card fraud, man, hey, I respect that. I can see that. You're trying to get your money. I ain't mad at you. I know how I go. But then you go to jail for a conviction of rape. But then God blessed you. Even though I know you say you don't believe in God, God blessed you. And you got the rape conviction overturned due to a technicality. And you was back on the streets. Back on the streets ready to do great things. Man, God said, here, man, I'm a... Uh, I'm going to give you a clean slate, let you out, do your thing. And what do you do? Back to the same bullshit. You haven't learned, man. It's 
fascinating. You start a series of websites. And of course, all your websites failed. Then I remember that one time you put the scheme up. You said you sold the website to some big company and you made all this money. Yeah. Which I know he bought those likes like he bought those YouTube views. Everything. He bought the fans. And I'm tired of looking at my statement each month. Seeing advantage by YouTube, buy this, buy that. I'm sick of it. He buys the fans, he buys the likes, he buys the views. All right. I was paying the server every fucking month, 300 something dollars per come. You want to know what that site generated in his pocket? Mm-hmm. About 80 to to $100 a month. Oh. Plus, he, he, in his mind, really thinks that one of these businesses will pan out. He really, honestly thinks that he's going to be successful. He's delusional when he sold. He didn't sell shit. I'm going to sell it to who? Who going to buy that shit? He ain't sell it to no goddamn body. No, he didn't sell shit. He pretended. He types all that shit up himself and pretend like all the agreement has been made. Where Why did he act like he sold it, though? Because he couldn't afford the server. Then you decided you wanted to get into get back into the music business. So you wanted to put an album out. And you enlisted some pretty good rappers. You really did. And the album still flopped. Don't you see if you got a bunch of good rappers and you put an album out that are used to selling records, but you can't sell any? That means the common denominator is you. You're the one factor that's fucking everything up. The rappers are cool. You the fuck up. Nobody likes your brand. Nobody likes you. Man, switch your style up. Watch the money pile up. You're losing, fam. You're losing. Let me tell you, he was living. Because when I hit my financial difficulties, I moved back home with my parents because I have a loving family. So when he called me to, to come see his daughter, so he used her as a pawn always. That's my weak spot. She's my daughter. You know, it's her father, so whatever. So I sent him a ticket to come here. He was sleeping on a cot in my childhood bedroom, okay? He has no money, no money at all. He's never had a car. He's, anything he's ever had is from a woman. Is the woman that he's with at the time. And then when they get sick of him and boot his ass out, he's right back walking the streets with his duffel bags. He don't have shit at all. Then you have this infatuation with these gorillas and monkeys that you decided to do, do, do like your boy. You want to be like me and say, man, I'm going to start me a clothing line for girls. And then you're going to call girls cute gorillas and shit man fam where are you from what girl wants to be called a gorilla what what have you seen a gorilla my nigga there is nothing attractive about a gorilla what what makes you think a girl want to wear some clothing about her being a gorilla dude are you are you if that's the type of shit you spitting in girls ears i see why you ain't got no game bro I mean, that's just horrible, man. Uh, okay. I got two questions. Just one. Thing. What is his problem with me? I don't know. He has some sick kind of infatuation with you. And it's ridiculous. What? What it is, is he's so, he's so envious of you, of what you got going on, your, your, your films. Because... I think it is. He's just, you're where he wants to be in life. That's what it is. You've had success. You've made money. And he hasn't. And he's going on 40. And he's never going to. That's horrible. And then you decided to follow in your footsteps of your idol. That's me. I'm your self-proclaimed idol. Your baby mother already told me, man. You want to become a filmmaker. See, you try to make, make trailers, act like you're going to put a movie out. 
even set up fake little interviews, acting like somebody interviewing you like you got something important to say. And once again, that was another failure. And even when you try to do that, you try to enlist the help of my previous uh, partner, part time mentor, Pimpikin. I know you tried to get Pimpikin on your team. And one thing about Pimpikin, I will say, as much as I don't like the dirtbag, one thing I will say, he did show me how to get some money. Now, with that guy on your team, you would think you would be able to get some money and do that right. But of course, even with that, you couldn't get that off the ground. Still failed. And now you spend your time going over old telephone calls you made with guys who are locked up over pedophile charges of pimping on 14-year-old girls. So you're a former convicted rapist talking to a guy that's locked up for pedophile charges and you're talking bad about me. Wow, that's a great network you got going there, man. Really great network. Now, here's the thing about the ongoing hate speech towards me. You keep trying to say and promote that people are going to jail because of my films. Listen, man, my documentary films document American subculture and real life street characters. So if somebody goes to jail, that's just a testament to how true my documentaries are. They're real life street characters. That's part of the game. That shit happens. Has absolutely nothing to do with my films. And out of everybody that's been on my films that have been to jail, you've spoken to many of them, and all of them will tell you the exact same thing. Maroy had nothing to do with my case. Nothing. To say that my films get someone locked up is like saying a record of young Jeezy would get him locked up for saying he sell dope or Jay-Z would go to jail for saying he got kilos. We know Jay-Z ain't got no goddamn kilos. You know, it's called freedom of speech, dude. And the one person that you have paid, yes, I know you sent the money, that you have paid to say something about me because the man is doing 50 years in prison for pimping on an underage chick, guess what? He's not even on any of my films. Dude, you're a different type of idiot. How are you going to blame me for somebody that's not even on my fucking films? You sound fucking... Dude, I'm trying to think. There's nobody that could possibly be this stupid. But I understand. Like Charlemagne the God said, Hey man, the lie sounds better than the truth if it's more entertaining. I get it. But dude ain't even on none of my films and you're trying to say my film got him locked up. Okay, man. Try again, dude. Try again. I'm telling you, you were spot on with what you thought you knew about him. You were pretty much on, okay? But he is a bum. He has no money. He doesn't support his three children. Uh, and... All these pimps that I hear him talk to on the phone, I'm just flabbergasted by how they tell him shit and they confide in him and they act like they're friends. And this nigga, it's crazy. It's crazy. Meanwhile, he's on a little broke down laptop sleeping on my floor. Getting, talking about he's exposing this one and that one and putting up fake pictures of cars he never saw. This is just old already. And I'm done. Now look at all the failures that you had in your life. And the thing that fascinates me the most. That after all those failures. Somebody would actually listen to enlist you as their manager. What the fuck are you going to manage dude? You can't even manage to take care of your own kids. I got video of your own daughter saying. I hate my daddy. It's ridiculous. The whole point is, he's never done anything for me. He's never done anything for his children. He's never had a job. He never had any money. So, and I'm, I'm a sympathetic kind of person. And, you know, I don't look for all of that, you know, glamour and glitz. And I don't need money. I make my own money. But, you know, it would be nice. 
support his kids. And I say, it took, took my second child coming to give me the strength to just say, you know what? She doesn't deserve what my older daughter went through. She doesn't deserve him walking in and out when things don't work out, when his business ventures fall through. Nothing he's ever touched ever came to fruition and got him any money. I must admit, I'm I'm, I'm kind of empty in the compassion department, but when I heard that, I really thought to myself, I'm going to let this nigga live. You know, when I saw you flagging videos down on YouTube, sending letters and shit, talking about you going to file lawsuits and all that, they didn't know you. I knew you was a dirtbag. I knew you wasn't going to do nothing. They even asked me. They sent me some stuff, told me I could change a little stuff to keep it up. But out of the compassion, the very itsy bitsy piece of compassion I got in my heart for black people, which I don't even think you black, but for the little compassion I have, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to take it down. I'm going to take all the videos down because I don't want to be known as that type of guy. You know, that's, that's, it's just not cool. But here you go back at it again. Bothering people, dying for attention. For years, you tried to do your thing without the rah-rah. Nobody paid you no attention. Here's my thing, man, Junior. You're talking about three, four years, bro. What have you done? We ain't even going to talk about the whole 40 years you've been living. What you, 41, 42 now? Never had a car, never owned a house, never nothing. No accolades, no accomplishments, nothing. It's 40 years. But let's just speak about the last four years. What have you done, man? You ain't got no money. You ain't stacked no money up. You ain't did. Even if money ain't your biggest goal. I know you're trying to set it up like, you know, Maroy's the good guy. He's the clean, happy, good guy. Everybody likes him. So I'm going to be the bad guy. Like, you're going to be my arch nemesis. You're going to be the villain, the super villain. And that's cool. But the problem you got with that, Junior, is if you're going to be the villain, all the villains. You remember Batman? Remember in the movie? Joker? When the, when the movie first started, the Joker was robbing a bank. Yeah, he was trying to get to the money. Remember Bain? Bain was robbing the stock market. He was trying to get to the money. Super villains all trying to get to the money because they understand it take money to go to war, bro. You don't, you're not trying to ever get to the money. You're never trying to get to the money, dude. So you're wasting your time. You have no dedication to anything except hating on other black men. There's so many other causes out here you could put that same energy into exposing. But you just attacking black men. Black men on the street level at that. And I realized why you do it. Because I thought about it. I said, man, why does this nigga spend his time? When you went away for a few years, I thought either you was in jail or you was trying to better yourself. And I saw you was trying to work your number, but none of your shit was working. I saw you out in St. Louis. You know what I mean? Doing your thing. Trying to move around, but. I was like, why would this dude just be so busy trying to hate niggas? What, what is motivating him? And I realized you don't want to be a hater. You just don't know how to do nothing else but hate. That's the only, it, you're not even successful at hating. It ain't like you get paid from hating. It ain't like all you get is a little bit of attention and notoriety from other people that are also haters. And the only people that are actually scared of you are the people that stand on the side with you because there's no way you can make me believe that anybody believes the same beliefs you have. That anybody shares the same principles you have. Somebody that don't take care of their kids. Somebody that's not respected by their baby mother or their mother. I mean, you like a real life piece of shit, bro. And I'm telling you this brother to brother, man. Like, hey, man, I offer you an invite to my place. Come on over, man. Let's chop it up. I ain't going to sabotage you. I ain't going to have nobody around. Just me and you. Good old-fashioned one-on-one. You dig? Hey, man, you done dealt with a lot of failures in your life. And one thing I do know, man, is uh, a hateful man, a hater is a man that has been hurt and he has not been healed yet. You got a lot of healing to do. A hater is someone who has anger towards everyone reaching success. And that's you. Everybody that's doing all right, you hating. 
hating on Silky Slim because he didn't want to be on your little funk ass album. Hey, man, everybody don't want to be your friend. Take your ball, go home. Hey, Junior, man, I wish you nothing but continued. I don't even know what the fuck to call it, what you've been doing with your life. Whatever it is that you've been doing, that's been doing absolutely nothing for you that you've been reaping absolutely no benefits for. Hey, man, keep up the bad motherfucking work, man. You ain't scaring nobody, bro. Nobody. Hate all you want. You're wasting your time. It's only the internet. We all can play the same game. You loser. Hashtag that. He does not smoke. You will not catch him at a party, a player's ball, a function, nothing. He's weird. Deep down inside, he stays confined behind his laptop at least 12 to 13 hours a day in a room. That's all our relationship is. That's all it is. All it ever was. com, man. Y'all log on to get the, um, my latest films. This is what I've been doing while Junior been hating. Making up a millionaire volume, certified volume two, Ock Obama Banks. Hottest nigga in the country right now. America's daughters, man. I've been doing tours if y'all want to book me to come to your college, uh, come to your school, man. 702-806-4880. Email me, Maroya, com. Guns, America's Fascination with Firearms. Excellent film, man. This is an excellent, excellent film. I'm telling you, it's dope. Cross Country Pimpin' Volume 5. You see the look on my face on that cover? A Too Real for TV exclusive. That's how I feel about the game right now. Because of suckers like this. Y'all be cool and careful. Subscribe to my, subscribe to my channel. YouTube.com slash 2 real for TV. And I'm gone. I mean, it's not because I'm a hater or anything, because I would love for him to be successful because I benefit from that. Too real for TV.com.